right, how's it going everyone? We're back with another training log. So, I found something very recently, something that is going to be very useful for myself, for my own training, and that's what this video is all about. So, most of these rinks have these like live barn cameras, or these like automatic cameras that detect action and they'll record your own practices. Like some rinks have it, some rinks don't. But I've been trying to find a NHL practice on Life Barn, and more often than not, they're privated. But I got my hands on one recently. Um, the team shall remain nameless. You could probably guess anyway. But point being, got to see an NHL practice on Live Barn. I've been looking for that view for quite a while now, and finally got it. Problem is, I was going to do it today, but this system right now ain't working. I mean, I'm also not like activating it enough. I'm just one guy right now. I came in late, got to refilm it. So, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh oh, there we got it going. Yeah, we got the gimbal going. Let's see if this actually works for long distance. Nope. Come on here, can you see me right here? You see that? No, come on. Oh, wait, uh, got it, yeah, let's go. So the rule of thumb is that it's around five seconds or so, I wanna say, for some drills, I'll show it off. And from top of, or between like the circles or so, between the face up dot and the top of the circles to about the blue line or so. So that's what we're gonna do. Get her going here. Try to make it five seconds. Nah, I can't count right away. Oh, yes, it followed. This thing's like live barn in of itself, sort of. Just tracks it on its own. And the feet moving fast. Oh, there's someone looking at me. Did you actually track? Oh, it's still going. So right now I'm not too worried about like looking back at film at the moment, like right away, even though that's usually what I would do. For now, it's just messing it up. Also on a time crunch, I got like two minutes left. Out of respect for the people here, even though I work here as well. Oh my God. <laughs> uh. Tried this earlier as well to get the camera or live run going and it wasn't working. Got myself out of breath really easily. Been out of this for a month. It's only one way back and that's like this. Ah, fuck. I think my shin angle's off. Just gotta get the heart rate going up again. That's all. All right, a couple more. I should call my shot. All right, it's eight o'clock right now. Let's see if we can get two more reps in. Again, I'm looking at this in post, if it's like five seconds or so. Don't worry about looking at it on the ice, but. From what I observed, it's pretty much like the average that they, they had between all their drills. About five seconds. All right. Let's see if I can cross the whole time. Tap up. Ah. I didn't call it before. I'll do it. I'll do it for this one. We'll go uh, top right this time. Oh, come on. Eh, gotta get off. So for those of you watching in uh, on, a, on a replay, I'm doing this off the ice. I decided that this would be a better way to do such a thing. So we'll just take a look anyway. I'm also on a Zoom call, so if you want to participate in any of these calls uh, like live, sign up for the, tra the Trains.0 Plus membership at trains.0.com. 
So what we got for you today is how to match an NHLer's speed, uh, the speed of an NHL practice and, and game. Um, and I discovered this after sort of like, I don't, it, look, the clips were there. They were on Live Barn. Usually the team likes to uh, private their practice and they didn't. So I just happened to get my hands in on the practice. The team shall remain nameless. Let's just say that. You might guess what the team is. But I'm not going to say their name. It's like... Deal with it. We'll just go into and analyze it. But I like this live barn view because you are able to actually get the same exact camera view as well as just generally you get rid of the side to side, the pan view of a camera. I, I like this view where it just backs off and just shows the players moving across the screen and the, the, the camera doesn't pan or track the players. So in essence, you're actually able to pinpoint exactly where um, each player is like moving to positionally uh, and you're actually able to calculate their speed a lot easier than with like a panning with a panning camera. So for example, if you're gonna like, draw on your screen, uh, like let's say, let's track like this coach. So you put like a little circle dot right there, then you let the clip play out. So he starts right there, he circles around uh, exactly like that. Whereas with like a panning uh, camera, it's not to say that this isn't still like, isn't possible to track where like each player is like moving to. But if you were to do the same like drawing on the screen uh, thing with a isolated view, let's just say like McDavid starts like, like right here for example. And if you just played out the clip and you say, oh, he kind of goes like this, this and that. Well, it's harder to see that because all you're seeing is just the player. You're not expanding your field of vision to the rest of the uh, the rink, uh, and that's what the advantage of getting this view with Live Barn is like. So that is why uh, that is the advantage with uh, this view, and that is why I was really excited to uh, get this view. In fact, it's also very easy to compare um, both yourself. And the NHL is actually, it's a lot easier um, comparing it positionally. Now, with the advantage with the isolated view is that you get an up close look at the body movements and mechanics. So now with this, you get a great look at how his feet are crossing, like all these like little stick handles, that little uh, like hip movement with the outside edge. You get a great look at the shin angle, for example. You can sort of see like his hips like moving from one side to the other, you can like see either slow it down or speed it up just like you would with any other video. Um, you get a great look with the isolated view at, at the mechanics. So that's the advantage of, of that. And again, what you don't get with that isolated view is a full rink um, perspective. It's definitely useful to use both. So that's that's what I'll say. Both has Both have their uses, both have their advantages and disadvantages, but you should be using both if possible. Uh, so for this, let's take a look at myself. So um, it's not a rule, it's not like a definitive rule that I came up with. What I discovered actually is that the flow of the game is not actually that fast. And what I mean by that is that from Let's just say one end, one end of the ice, so like in the middle of the zone, let's say like a defensive zone, to the other end of the ice, like starting you just cross the blue line, for example. The amount of time it takes to get from that point in the in one of the zones to the other zone is actually about five seconds. Uh, and to prove that, we'll just take a look at uh, this practice clip. So from this perspective, this is where we can actually analyze it. Uh, like really well and you're going to notice that this clip uh, in particular from the point that they start 
when this player and this player start moving to when they arrive at the blue line is about six seconds. And you can see right here, that's around six seconds. Now for another comparison, let's take a look at say like a McDavid uh, who already has a bunch of speed and is going uh, to cross the, the, the blue line. So he's actually starting right below the circles. He has already speed generated. Those are factors to consider. The amount of time it takes for him to get to the blue line from this point with his already like generated speed is about four seconds. So again, it's not a general like definitive, it's five seconds, it's five seconds, it's five seconds. It's around five seconds. And yeah, that's how you can actually calculate um, the speed of the game actually. With knowing that, with knowing the exact speed of the game, you're able to like analyze positions a lot easier. You're able to come up with systems a lot easier. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure like, I wouldn't be surprised if like NHL coaches actually knew this go, going into like studying their games and, and stuff like that. But this is still something really interesting from my perspective to look at as traditionally a mechanics coach and someone who always looks at player player movements or has been for the last like few years. But it's also very nice to like back off a bit and look at the general uh, view and perspective. And if you want to take a look at my progress so far, since this is a training log, this isn't just an like informative little information thing. So from this perspective, I don't know, looks looks pretty fast. <laughs> but uh, if we're to actually calculate those to six seconds for that one. Now ideally the what what you should strive for is like Mc, McDavid, McKinnon, Barzell, all those players who are just like getting under five seconds from zone to zone. Seven seconds for this one. I also don't start, there's, there's a number of factors here as well. I don't start out, when say comparing to this blue guy, he also just goes right away without any like forward momentum. And I tend to, I give myself a little step head start. Whereas uh, say the guy in blue just gets, just goes from pretty much a stop. Uh, so the guy in blue is right here, play. Yeah, so he, he doesn't have any forward momentum. He's just going from a sort of stopped position. But yeah, that is the general consensus on how to match an NHL uh, practice, how to match NHL level speed. Uh, it's a little simple calculation like that. That's pretty much all you need. And if you don't match that, then you have some work to do, obviously, because that means you're slower. Uh, so just remember that it's around five seconds and the best players usually get under five seconds. The fastest players usually get under five seconds. So that's what to do, that's what to work on. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.